Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming a book review and I am going to review two books in this video. We have The Emperor's Ghost and The Rifle Queen by Isabel Steger. The Emperor's Ghost was released in 2017 and The Rifle Queen was released now in July the 21st. I got the second book, The Rifle Queen, as an ARC from NatGalley and then I saw a note on NatGalley that you could download the first book for free for a short amount of time. So obviously I needed the first book to read the second book so I got the both of them even though like the first one wasn't an arc obviously and I read them both now yay so that is why I'm gonna review them here today obviously as I said it has already been released so you can get them now if they sound interesting for you. The Emperor's Ghost and the Rifle Queen is the first and second book in the Paths of Lantistine how to pronounce that who knows Trilogy. I think it's a trilogy, at least serious. I don't remember what I read, but yay. Great research before filming a video. It is basically set on this continent of Lantistine, where there used to be a big empire, but then they became many different small countries. We then have Imperator Elgar, who got one of the countries and then he decided to invade the others because he wants to make this big empire again that existed who knows how long ago. The first book starts out with Lanvalis, which is one of the countries that is falling because he just invaded it and like won. So this is his third country that he has conquered. And yay, we then skip like two years later and that is where like our story starts out initially in Empire's Ghost, the first book, obviously. We have then three other countries that are most important. We mention other countries across the sea, but like they are not as relevant to the story. We have Ragley, which is one country, and there we follow the prince, Kelkan, who is in argument with his father about the future of what is gonna happen to like marriage and such. And also, all the countries are worried in general about Algar invading them because like it's just a matter of time before he decides to be even a bigger ass than he already is. We then have Astradaras, which again, can't pronounce things, but I'm trying. They don't have a royal family ruling them, but they have a marquise. And there we have a woman ruling called Ariane Rod Margraine. And she is a handful of a character, but I will talk a bit more about the character later in the video. The last country we have is Ismira, which is like across this kind of cursed thing that they have to go through. It's like kind of desert place. What's the impression I got at least? Maybe not desert place. It's at least very much hotter there than the other countries. And that is also the most powerful country of the three that are left that Algar hasn't conquered, but it is not in a conflict right now of what to do with Algar because the prince, the crown prince of the country has just gone missing and they are like struggling with like crowning the next heir, like the sister of the prince, or like waiting to see if he will show up. But they don't know what to do yet, so they are not really that potent right now in this big conflict that is bothering them. That is like the general overview of the book. I feel like I don't talk like directly of a plot and more as I said now we talked about the different countries that are important in the conflict because it's really hard to talk about the plot because there's so many different characters. It is like I would say Game of Thrones is in that way because we follow so many point of views but it's like you get an overview of them after a while, like, if you manage to read Game of Thrones or watch Game of Thrones or whatever you did, you can manage this. It's not, like, confusing in that way. But we follow all these different characters that interact in different ways, and they all have different tasks or journeys, like, merges together. So it's not, like, one concrete plotline, except for the fact that Algar, the dude, is, like, wanting to conquer all the countries, and all the countries is trying to find out what to do about it, if they're gonna be alliances. We also follow people in the country has already conquered and seeing how they're dealing with his rule, etc. How to share my thoughts? First of all, obviously I can't talk that much about the Rifle Queen because I don't want to spoil anything, but obviously like I'm gonna talk a bit in general about it. I'm not gonna spoil anything in this video, obviously. The main issue with the story when I started the Empire's Ghost and it continued to the Rifle Queen is that the writing is very, very, very dry for me. It just doesn't make the story exciting at all. It just makes it 
this super dry, really drought out story. Sometimes the writing is really good and I'm like, wow, okay, now I can read quickly. But sometimes it kind of just disappeared for me and I was just like, what is even going on right now? But overall, I didn't enjoy the writing and it definitely made the story more of a negative for me because the writing made the story kind of boring and then because I was bored, I didn't enjoy the book, obviously. If you want one specific example for why the writing was annoying or like made the story boring or confusing was that it kept changing point of view mid-page, at least on the like the Kindle version I got. And it made it very confusing because we were with these people and then suddenly we were with other people. And that made it confusing. We were like in one place all the time as I understood it after a while, but still several characters could be in one place and if they change point of view mid page it made it quite confusing. Then we have the characters and I did really enjoy some. We follow for example this band of thieves. There are six of them in one of the countries Algar has already conquered. I think that was his first place he conquered and in that place it's very fascinating because they have this lost history like history has basically like been deleted they don't know where they came from like they don't know their history or their culture at all because like it's just been ruined basically that is like a subplot to like find out where they came from and I thought that was really interesting but I just felt like that wasn't delved in deep enough for it to be as interesting as it should be. But either way, we follow these six bands of thieves and they got separated and we follow them all different places at the same time as we follow the other rulers and other several characters that have importance too. Like one character, for example, Sadiel, if I remember his name correctly, his sister died and was killed by this commander named Shinsei, which is like this first in command for Elgar and he is like on a revenge thing and then he interacts with the other characters by going after him to kill him because he killed his sister for example. That's one of the characters we follow. So we follow quite different loads but my favorite was definitely Ariane Rod. She is as I said the Marquise for Estradaras and we get to see her rule the country because like she gets attendances and people say what's bothering them just like a king or a queen and then she like fixes their problems and I just love to see how she handles it. She's very clever. She loves to read books a lot, which is just very intelligent. I never got how old she was for some reason, but she's just super intelligent and has a very interesting kind of character that really stood out on page for me and I really, really enjoyed her. Also in the second book in a FF romance and I shipped them so much and I didn't know in the first book that they actually had a romance and then it blossomed in the second one. And yeah, it's not a spoiler because that shouldn't be a spoiler, but I was just like, oh my god, it made me love her even more, but she was already my favorite character. I just think like her personality is very special compared to the other characters on the page and just generally a character I really enjoyed. So definitely my fave and every time we follow her, I'm just like, yes! Just as an example like of the, how it's written, we have Ariane Rod, as I said, but we also follow the point of view of the person she's in a relationship with. We also follow sometimes the point of view of the guard in that, like, the captain of the guard in her country. And they all, like, interact in the same storyline, obviously. But we follow the point of view of all of them. So we always get a lot of sides of the same story. It doesn't repeat itself, but, like, it really, like, dives deep in that way. And I like that, but also it became a bit confusing Sometimes because people have obviously first name and last name and on page they were referred to different names at different times and it took a while for me to get that this was actually the same character because they changed the name after which point of view we were following. So like we can sometimes be called Ariane Rod and then sometimes she was referred to her first name and her last name. But yeah, of course I got it after a while but in the beginning I was like, wait, who are even you? But yeah. It went fine. That was just an example. Another thing I really enjoyed with all the grand scheme of the characters is that since there's so many and since they all interact in different ways at different times, they split up, they come together, etc. In the beginning you don't get that as much because we like slowly get introduced to it but after a while there's a lot of different reactions on like a big, I was gonna say, chessboard. And I love that they don't know their own significance like we see the full picture we see them interacting knowing who they come from and where they've been and who they met and we know that they have met but they don't know that they have met do you get it and i love to like i don't know just be on the top and just look down and 
knowing that they don't know yet and that you know that they're gonna come to a point where they find all this out and I like enjoy the anticipation towards that. Now I talked a lot about the world so I don't know what more to add really just the fact that there's different countries but we don't know really the big difference between the countries like we don't delve into deep into what differs in between them. We know that they have guns somewhere, we know that there's maybe different climate maybe and that one country is powerful and another one is tinier but like we don't really know why and we don't really know the big difference between them but of course like there's not really that big difference between for example Norway and Sweden I mean of course I would know the difference because I live there but like you wouldn't maybe not dwell into every single detail when you have like an overview of countries I guess there's also of course magic I mean there's fantasy but in the first book there's like basically no magic at all it comes a bit into play but in the second book it's much more potent and I think in the third book it will be much more determination for the magic but it was fascinating to see how slowly it would introduce and not just like totally focus focus on it. Again, remind me of Game of Thrones because there's basically no magic in Game of Thrones. I'm just saying, I, I, I can't stop comparing it, okay? But yeah, I wish we had more world building in general. We basically are thrown in and supposed to figure it out on our own. There's lots of countries, as I said, lots of different things, but as I went into the second book, I had gotten an overview of it, but like in the beginning, like in the first book, etc., it took a while for me to get everything because there was a lot of names and different things but like it's fine if you use the fantasy it will be fine <laughs> and for the plot i would say what plot i have not just told you that there's a lot of characters with different interactions and different things going on with them but overall for the big plot of the story it takes a while for anything to happen. Like, I have read two books and I basically feel like nothing really has happened. We have now come to a point where like, we took a lot of time to get there. And like overall for the story, I feel like nothing much has changed. Again, <laughs> reminds me of Game of Thrones because we waited for those zombies for ages and like in the meanwhile there was a lot of other small plots going on but it doesn't mean that nothing happens but I just feel like there was no concrete plot and it works but it also made the story feel really slow and like staggered a bit so I don't know. I also like struggle reading this book not because like I didn't like it, but yeah, a bit, a bit, a part because I didn't enjoy myself as much because I was kind of bored and things took a long time to get going. But also just because there was a lot of text, I wonder if I had a physical copy, how much text it's in each page, because I felt like I read it so much lower than I read anything else. I'm really fascinated of how much text it really is because I'm curious. That definitely affected my experience of the book, of course, how you read a book and which mood you're in and how it makes you feel affects your experience of a book and in this case I read it so slowly that it affected my enjoyment of it because I'm not saying that you have to rush through every single book oh my god that's not what I'm saying but it just made me feel like oh my god it's even slower because I'm reading it so slowly so it made me feel like the book was even slower than probably it even was like yeah definitely affected me but yay Overall, a solid fantasy book. I think it has a lot of satisfaction in it where pieces come together, characters interact and stuff like that. And like the magic blossomed and the world blossomed and things like that. I think it has a lot of satisfaction in that way, but it's still not fantastic because it just, all the other problems I had with it, like for example, the writing and how slow it went and stuff like that affected me too much to like, I love it, but I didn't hate it either. It was just like, medical for me. I think I read the first book two stars and the second book three stars but I enjoyed the second book much more than the first one and I really think that the second book was a much stronger book than the first one just because I feel like the writing was better, I feel like the story was more solid and the first one was more like it really felt like the first few chapters of a really long journey and I lose a long time just writing those first few chapters. I am curious to see how it all will go. I'm curious to see how all the characters will end up. Now we've built up so much that I want to see where it all will go. Now I've read the two first books, I might as well finish the third one whenever that is coming. Since the first one was released in 2017 and we're now in 2020, it used three years to come out with the next book in the series. So I don't know when the third one is coming but it's definitely coming more. I just feel like the point we ended in book two was a point we should have ended with in book one. So the author is definitely using their time to get to a point and to really put out all the stones in place 
to get to move on to other things. It's not necessarily a bad thing, I'm just saying that that's the kind of book it is. I would recommend it, I'm not saying that you shouldn't read it, like I would never say that to anyone for that matter, but if I was gonna recommend a fantasy book it wouldn't be the first one to come to mind. I would recommend something else and I think like it can be hard for readers to get into this at once. Like it is an adult fantasy, I thought it was YA for some reason, but that doesn't matter. But if I was gonna recommend someone a fantasy, adult or otherwise, I wouldn't think about this at once. But maybe if you read some in a genre, if you like Game of Thrones-esque stories, I would say go for it. Like, I think there's a lot of enjoyment there. As I said, the characters have heart. There's some really good ones. And I think it can be enjoyable for a lot of people. It wasn't like the grandest thing for me. And I thought it was fine. I think now in Aftermath, after reading it, I enjoyed the story more than when I was actually reading it, which is a bit funny. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna finish it up. I need to know what's gonna happen. And I think that's it for this review. I think I covered a lot. I hope. You will see me soon in a new video. Hope you enjoyed. I will leave a link to the Goodreads for these two down below so you can read more about them if you want to. And you will see me soon in a new one. Bye!